Hi, I want to share with you one of my favorite stories, the legend of the Indian paintbrush, retold and illustrated by Tommy DePala. Many years ago, when the people traveled the plains and lived in a circle of teepees, there was a boy who was smaller than the rest of the children in the tribe. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't keep up with the other boys who were always riding, running, shooting their bows, and wrestling to prove their strength. Sometimes his mother and father worried for him. But the boy, who was called Little Gopher, was not without a gift of his own. From an early age, he made toy warriors from scraps of leather and pieces of wood, and he loved to decorate smooth stones with red juices from berries he found in the hills. The wise shaman of the tribe understood that Little Gopher had a gift that was special. Do not struggle, Little Gopher. Your path will not be the same as the others. They will grow up to be warriors. Your place among the people will be remembered for a different reason. And in a few years, when Little Gopher was older, he went out to the hills alone to think about becoming a man. For this was the custom of the tribe, and it was there that a dream vision came to him. The sky filled with clouds, and out of them came a young Indian maiden and an old grandfather. She carried a rolled-up animal skin, and he carried a brush made of fine animal hairs and pots of paints. The grandfather spoke, My son, these are the tools by which you shall become great among your people. You will paint pictures of the deeds of the warriors and the visions of the shaman, and the people shall see them and remember them forever. The maiden unrolled a pure white buckskin and placed it on the ground. Find a buckskin as white as this, she told him. Keep it, and one day you will paint a picture that is as pure as the colors in the evening sky. And as she finished speaking, the clouds cleared and a sunset of great beauty filled the sky. Little Gopher looked at the white buckskin and on it he saw colors as bright and beautiful as those made by the setting sun. Then the sun slowly sank behind the hills and the sky grew dark and the dream vision was over. Little Gopher returned to the circle of the people. The next day, he began to make soft brushes from the hairs of different animals and stiff brushes from the hair of the horse's tails. He gathered berries and flowers and rocks of different colors and crushed them to make his paints. He collected the skins of animals, which the warriors brought home from their hunts. He stretched the skins on wooden frames and pulled them until they were very tight. And he began to paint pictures of great hunts, of great deeds, of great dream visions. So that the people would always remember. But even as he painted, Little Gopher sometimes longed to put aside his brushes and ride out with the warriors. But always he remembered his dream vision and he did not go with them.
Many months ago, he had found his pure white buckskin, but it remained empty because he could not find the colors of the sunset. He used the brightest flowers, the reddest berries, and the deepest purples from the rocks, and still his paintings never satisfied him. They looked dull and dark. He began to go to the top of a hill each evening and look at the colors that filled the sky, to try and understand how to make them. He longed to share the beauty of his dream vision with the people. But he never gave up trying. And every morning when he awoke, he took out his brushes and his pots of paints and created the stories of the people with the tools he had. One night as he lay awake, he heard a voice calling to him. Because you have been faithful to the people and true to your gift, you shall find the colors you are seeking. Tomorrow, take the white buckskin and go to the place where you watch the sun in the evening. There on the ground, you will find what you need. The next evening, as the sun began to go down, Little Gopher put aside his brushes and went to the top of the hill as the colors of the sunset spread across the sky. And there on the ground all around him were brushes filled with paint, each one a color of the sunset. Little Gopher began to paint quickly and surely using one brush, then another. brushes being left on the hillside. And as the colors in the sky began to fade, Little Gopher gazed at the white buckskin and he was happy. He had found the colors of the sunset. He carried his painting down to the circle of the people, leaving the brushes on the hillside. Mm. What's going to happen to those brushes? Guess what happened? And the next day, when the people awoke, the hill was ablaze with color, for the brushes had taken root in the earth and multiplied into plants of brilliant reds, orange, oranges, and yellows. And every spring from that time, the hills and meadows burst into bloom. Every spring, the people danced and sang the praises of Little Gopher, who had painted for the people. And the people no longer called him Little Gopher, but he who brought the sunset to the earth. So in this story, this tells of how this flower came to be, and the name of the flower is the Indian paintbrush. So a nice follow-up activity that I like to do when I read the story in my classroom is take the children outside and let them find something in nature to make a paintbrush out of and let them use that as their painting tool to paint a picture. And I usually ask them to paint the sky and the things around them. So it's a great outdoor art activity, but it's also one you can do inside. You can bring some indoor material, bring some outside materials inside and use them to make your paintbrushes. Uh, at Artisan in Woburn, I would take the pine needles, with so many in the back, and I'd wrap them up and I'd make little hand brushes for the kids out of those, but also flowers um, and leaves and other things like that. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the legend of the Indian paintbrush.